Alright you guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Trey and let's talk about X-Men 97 episode 5, Remember It. Oh boy. Oh, it's gonna be remembered alright. Jeez, that that was a that was an episode for you right there. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. Um I'm saying it in like a cool emotional um saddened way like wow there's a lot that happened in that episode um and the ending was just whoa um yeah so x-men 97 episode 5 um remember it is basically a gambit magneto rogue story featuring um nightcrawler and a side plot of gene gray madeline pryor and Cyclops, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Um, but the the main focal episode, the main focus is um, Rogue Gambit and Magneto, and it's not one of those things kind of like how last week's episode focused on Jubilee and then it jumped to Storm or whatever. No, all of this is tied into the plot itself. It's just kind of like wow, you know what I mean. So the X Men are being interviewed. Because, you know, now that um, Genosha is now part of the United Nations, they want to interview the X-Men. And they're going through um, explaining the X-Men and um, kind of doing like a, a insider edition of the X-Men. Um, while Magneto and Rogue and um, Gambit gets invited to Genosha because you know Genosha is United Nations and then of course you have Sebastian Shaw Emma Frost um and of course the um that lady I could I can't believe I can't believe I forgot her damn name but anyway um the senator she they they, very, they personally invited him there and Madeline Pryor is there because you know hey you know they need somebody um that was on the X-Men team and Madeline Pryor was on the X-Men team um, and then, of course, we meet our lovable Nightcrawler, of course, and, um, I love his, and I love, I just love Nightcrawler, I, I just love Nightcrawler, um, I'm just kind of mad that he's not a main character in X-Men, um, the X-Men animated series, even though it's kind of crazy because they have action figures for some of the X-Men characters, and I'm just like, well, you might as well just added them to the team because you added Bishop, but then Bishop only, um, <laughs> only left um three episodes in the same thing with storm so wouldn't it make sense to have you know nightcrawler archangel psylocke um colossus you know those characters actually on the team because the team the team can still have the original you know what i'm saying you can still have the original characters from the original show but add the new ones in there because it'll be kind of cool to kind of see it um but you know um one character i'm glad i didn't see was morph i i i don't know i, I just don't like I, I just don't like what they did with morph um in this series so anytime his ass is not on screen is a good thing for me because i just do not like this man um i don't know he just he, he just comes off annoying um but hey it is what it is that's just my personal opinion on the situation when it comes to um when it comes to that character but i was i was wondering when the tension between Rogue, uh, Magneto, and Gambit was gonna boil over, so they kind um they they decided to talk to Magneto alone while Gambit and Rogue, along with Nightcrawler, you know, tour Genosha and stuff like that. And you get to see a lot of the mutants that are living in peace or whatever. It's really cool. It's really a futuristic um kind of island for the mutants to kind of you know, live in peace, which is, which is pretty great, honestly, um, and of course, there's Dazzler performing, and you see Rogue in the crowd, but, like, Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler noticed that there's, like, something going on between Gambit and Rogue, and then he was like, you know, hey, you should, like, ask her to marry you, you know, clearly, we can tell that your soul's touch, and he was like, yeah, but, you know, me and Rogue can't touch, and he was like, there's more than, you know, um, you know, Nightcrawler being his himself, right? He's um he's 
very religious and he always bring back like religious quotes or whatever so you know he's like telling gambit like even if you guys can't touch you guys are still touching because you both of your souls have intertwined with one another so i guess gambit decided that he's going to try to try to um propose to rogue but while that's going on we get more interviews with the x-man and gene is in the middle of the lake pondering her memories with with whatever is real because her and cyclops everything's been awkward ever since then because of the notion of they've been they've been swapped in a um and while that's happening there's an interview with Cyclops and he's explaining everything that happened with the X-Men. And then, of course, they will, and people want to know about him and Jean Grey because publicly they're known to have got married and they're known to have a son together. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of that kind of happens or whatever. And while they're while he's explaining his his side of how they fell in love. Jean is explaining her side and how when she was possessed by the Phoenix, um, she and Scott still, you know, were dating and she was like, but she could feel everything and she wanted to like explore the cosmics, but she still wanted to be with um, Scott because she didn't want her becoming the Phoenix, um, you know, stop their love. And she's like, she, what she know for sure is Scott was her anchor. You know, and he kind of described like how it was kind of awkward at first when she had um, became the Phoenix Force. So both of them are experiencing different, but you can tell that they both love one another. And then, of course, Wolverine comes to talk to um, Jean Grey about things. And then she was like, you know, one thing for sure is that I don't really remember. I don't know which memories are mine, but I do know that I love Cyclops. I do know I care about the X-Men. And I do know I was the Phoenix Force. It's just, I just don't know where everything is for sure. And, you know, when um, Logan complimented her, she had a moment and then she kissed him. And then Wolverine was like, oh, I understand, Jeannie, but you need to talk to Cyclops and y'all need to figure everything out. And while that's happening, Madeline Pryor is having a psychic rapport with Jean Grey. I mean, with um, Scott, you know, talking about their child talking about the child that they had and because Jean is connected to Scott she was able to see their psychic rapport and she was like are you kidding me Scott she was like that was our thing and he and um she pushed Madeline out of you know Scott's mind and you know it pisses her off and the cameras kind of picked up their argument and she was like you know it's just like do you love me or do you love that clone that I, I was you know I was you know I was Jean and you know, a part of me even pulled out, and you love that part of, of me, and she's like, well, she is the mother of my child, and he's like, um, he's saying that you probably don't really love me, or anything, or did you only love the memory, and she was like, Scott, she's basically saying like, hey, as the Phoenix, as the Phoenix, do you know how hard it was not to leave, that you were my anchor, and you're over here trying to question my love for you, when you're having an affair, sort of with my clone that you care about my clone more than you care about me so yeah that kind of happened <laughs> and while that was going on they said that they want Magneto to um run you know Genosha but he said okay if he does there has to be a caveat with that because you know Charles left the X-Men and his dream of mutant co coexistence with Magneto and he was like okay if there's um it's only with one exception and the exception is if rogue becomes his queen and that kind of pisses rogue off because she was like you know we were we were supposed to pretend like nothing happened between us and now you want me to become your queen she was like this is crazy you know and he was like but you know in order for them to accept me you know i have to um i have to have an x-man that can also help me rule Genosha and of course she was like I don't know I, I feel like you're just doing this just to try to get me back and he was like you know um he's like just like Remy he's he, he uh, Magneto brought up the fact that just like Remy you know it's 
it's not hard. I mean, it's hard getting over you, Rogue. You know what I'm saying? And of course, of course, um, Rogue goes and talks to Remy because Remy was getting dressed for the little gala that they were having. And um, I think he was going to try to propose or whatever. And she explained the story of how she went down to the Savage Land with Mystique because Mystique took her to the Savage Land. And, you know, that's when she met Magneto. And, you know, he explained everything that was going on. She really didn't know, what, you know, how to feel about everything. This is before she knew Magneto was Magneto, of course. Um, and then when she realized that she can touch him without her powers, you know, an affair happened. But she realized that his demons and her demons, there's just too much going on. And she left. And that's when she realized that everything that was going on between um, her mother, her and Magneto, it was just too much. And then that's when she joined the X-Men. That's what that's what the story that's what the story is, is saying anyway. So, you know how that goes. Um, so, you know how that, you know how that is. Um, and Gamut was like, but you should have told me a long time ago. And she was like, she was like, you know, Remy, it's just kind of hard because I love you, um, you know, that I can't touch you, you know, that I can't feel you. And he was like, some things you don't need to feel in order to know, Shell. And of course, they go to the gala um, and Rogue kind of flies down in front of everybody in the dress. And she dances with Magneto because they can touch. Remy is um, feeling kind of ugh. Um, Jean's getting a psychic attack, uh, a psychic link or whatever with Madeline as well. And then, of course, that happens. Um, it's like some kind of warning or whatever. But both Madeline and Jean don't understand what the meaning is. While that's going on, um, Rogue and Magneto are performing in front of everybody. And then they kiss, and Rogue tells Magneto that she's sorry, but she was like, Remy's right, where she was going to go and find um, Gambit. Um, but then Madeline, she walks outside because, you know, she got a nosebleed from everything that happened or whatever. And we come to find out that, are you kidding me? Did you let this old bitch walk across the street when the light was fucking green? God damn it. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, anyway, so while Madeline was trying to get it together, um, Cable comes, he's like, turn off the music, turn off the music. She's like, what, what? Cause she's being a little disoriented. He was like, turn off the music. We got to go. We got to go. Um, you got to stop it. And then she was like, uh, Cable. And she was like, she looked into his eyes. She was like, oh, it's you and stuff like that. You survived. You made it. And he was like. He was like, oh, God, I'm out, of t I'm out of time. And he was like, I'm so sorry, Mom. And then the time traveling portal took him away. And she was like, what, what, what's going on? And before she got a chance to, an explosion goes off in Genosha. And it just, boom, blows it. A lot of boat. And then it's like this, like, mechanized sentinel with three heads or whatever. And it's just, it is just vaporizing people. It is killing mutants left and right. It is, it is a massacre. It is, it is bad. It is bad, and I think, I feel like it, I don't know if it's being, I don't know what comic is being pulled from. I feel like it's being pulled from Grant Morrison's one, where they had Cassandra Nova um, use a Sentinel to destroy um, Genosha, but I don't know, I I don't know, Magneto. So, um, Nightcrawler um, saves saves Magneto, Rogue, and Gamut at the last minute. Um, he's a little, he's a little burnt or whatever, but he's still alive. Um, but Rogue can't touch him because if she touched Nightcrawler while he's like that, he'll die. Luckily, Gambit is Gambit is there. And he's like, Shell, he's still alive. He's just, you know, um, he's just um, out for for a bit. Um, Magneto and Gambit, they start fighting the Sentinels. They're trying to get everybody out of there. They're trying to save the day. Um, and th th that Sentinel is just killing the fuck out of everybody. It is, it is, uh, it is bad. It is bad. It, but it's it's just like nonstop action. You know, with this one, it's just like, boom, bam, bam, choosh, protect the mutants and stuff like that. Magneto's trying to use his powers or whatever to attack the Sentinels. Um, you know, Rogue and Gambit are trying to find find the Morlocks. Um, and it is just, it is just crazy one after another. It's just, things are just, just blowing up and they're trying, the team is trying their best to keep everything together, but it's just not really working. 
And um, in the end, you know, um, they were able to find some of the, I think Callisto, she got killed. Um, and um, Gambit was able to find the Morlocks or whatever. And at the time um, when that happened, some of them, some of them got pushed aside when Magneto um, got sent back by the Sentinels, right? So Magneto is trying his best to, to, um, what the hell? Okay, hold on. Ooh, Jesus. All right, hold on. Ooh. And then, um, Magneto and Rogue are trying their best to get everybody out. Um, and the Morlocks, um, are finally out. But then the Sentinel is coming back. And it pushed Magneto back with um, into some of the Morlocks, and he uses his shield. He uses his Magneto shield to try to stop the laser, the laser beam that's killing um, them, while pushing Rogue, Rogue and Gambit aside, where he cover. He's trying to shield them. Gambit's like, "Don't you die?" I mean, not Gambit's not. Rogue's like, "Don't you die on me, Eric?" Or whatever and stuff like that. But he's using his powers to lock Rogue and um, Gambit in place and shielding them from the Sentinel, while um, he tells Leech. Um, do not be afraid and then the Sentinel like uh, looks like it kills them then Rogue tries to come and attack the Sentinels but she gets pushed back by Gambit Gambit goes and he fights the Sentinel and the Sentinel like literally um, stabs Gambit in the side or whatever but Gambit uses that opportunity to charge the um the wire that's stuck inside of him from the Sentinel, and he decides to detonate everything. He was like, the name's Gambit. Remember it. And bam. And after all of that, um, Rogue comes and see the destruction, and she was like, I can't feel him anymore. And the episode goes off like that. So yeah, that's how X-Men 97 ends. Remember it. Um, yeah, people are gonna definitely remember this episode because ooh, that was a lot of a lot of emotions there. It was a lot of emotions there. I mean, it's a good episode, honestly. But wow, it was something. But yeah, um, X Men '97. Remember it. Do you guys remember it? Will you remember it? Did you watch it? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.